Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Al Bond. I'm the CEO of the Avalon Foundation. Uh, it is, we're in the very, very home stretch of Plenar East, and I want to thank you all for uh, coming out today. Um, and truly, in our 15th year, the sort of theme for me personally has been about gratitude. Um, Plenar Easton has grown to be the largest outdoor painting competition in the United States, and it has become so yeah, because of an awful lot of really, really fantastic people. The many, many painters who have been a part of this event since the very beginning, uh, and we you know, really took some time this year to highlight some of those alumni painters who made the fantastic artwork over the last 15 years that has made this event successful. We are, of course, enormously grateful to the artists who are here this year who traveled from all over the United States and, and beyond uh, in order to, to be at, uh, here and, and uh, produce artwork in our community. Um, I want to say that uh, Talbot County and the town of Easton has the best volunteers anywhere. So just really, really outstanding people who give their time, some of whom are working for this event year-round, and yeah, many, many of whom uh, come out and do their part in, in all sorts of ways, in the hot and the cold and the everything that happens yeah, over the course of it. So again, volunteers, thank you so much. Um, the Avalon staff, the people that I get to work with all the time, are just such super people. And yeah, again, I'm so grateful to be able to wake up every morning and spend my time with these great, uh, great friends, really, and, and um, colleagues. The Avalon Foundation does a lot of different things in this community, and the board of trustees for the Avalon Foundation yeah, have been really instrumental in guiding our institution to be yeah, the largest uh, uh, arts organization on the Eastern Shore. Uh, we've had a couple of years now where it's been pretty lively. We just did a major renovation of the Avalon. Yeah, Again, we are so fortunate in that we have you know, a board that really understands, believes in, puts their time in, puts their dollars into, and, and you know, loves the work that we do. Uh, so you know, there are a number of Avalon board members here right now. If you would all just stand up um, and thank you. For, yeah. Thank you. Uh, our yeah, group of people who are financial supporters of uh, Plenary Easton, we call the Friends of Plenary Easton. And uh, again, this is an event that does not just happen. It takes dollars to do it, some of which comes from art sales. But we would not be able to mount an event of this scale without you know, people who year after year after year have been yeah, behind making Plein Air Easton, yeah, the biggest and the best. So again, friends of Plein Air, thank you very much. You're, these are the folks, you probably can't read it from here, but they're all super. Um, so again, gratitude. This event, Small Painting Sunday, is one that was really inspired by a past Avalon uh, trustee. Her name was Susan Bryce. She was just a fantastic person. There she is. Um, and you can just, from that photograph, kind of understand the kind of energy that she brought to everything that she did. Um, she passed now, I guess, uh, yeah, about four years ago. And yeah, we thought that it was, a, excuse me, three years ago, I'm sorry. Um, and we thought that it would be really fitting to, um, to make the, our new small painting event yeah, about her. Um, this event is sponsored by her dear friend, Ellen Votney, who is also the founder of the Avalon Foundation. And Ellen, would you come up and you know, maybe just say a couple of words? Thank you. Susan passed away three years ago in May, and 
Uh, what was an amazing thing that happened is the Avalon Foundation, because she is just so full of energy and so full of love for the arts, within a few months, uh, it came up with the idea, and it was Jessica and Al and all of them got together and decided that Small Painting Sunday would be a thing to do. And I know artists don't like to be confined in the size and everything like that, but it was the perfect way that we could celebrate what you all do and bring in new buyers because they could take a small piece of you home with them. Her excitement, Susan Bryce would stand at the door and be ready to come in right away and buy paintings. She bought paintings for her grandchildren and her children and her friends and he was, she was an inspiration to us all and all full of energy. And so to do this was just very special because if you haven't figured it out already, we are family. All of you out here are a part of the Avalon family and a part of this community and a part of the great event that we have here. I couldn't be more proud. The staff, Al has said it all already. But then I have to tell you this great story that just happened a little while ago. So I'm an educator. I think when I started the Avalon Foundation 25 years ago, I realized what I was doing is educating a community what a resource the Avalon is and what we can do and bringing that community together. And so I was over at the Avalon and, and uh, the young people were doing their, um, they did the paint out and they were all set up. And the Chesapeake, Col Chesapeake, Col Chesapeake Publishing, the president was there and he was going to give out awards to two of the, child or the children that he was going to put in his office and they're going to put in the Star Democrat and the whole nine yards, so it was all great. And he came up and his face was all painted. And he said that he was at the table, and this little girl came up to him. Or no, this little girl was sitting there, and she just did not look happy. And uh, so then he said, what's the matter? He said, do you want to paint my face? And she said, yes. And then all of a sudden, she painted one side of the face. What was it? Come on up here. So this is, this is what makes this so fun and so special. This is Madison. And that is Susan's granddaughter. And so here I am in the Avalon, and he's telling the story about this little girl who starts painting his face. And so you put, what did you put on the one side of his face? Blue. Blue. And what did you put on the other side? Green. <laughs> and then she, he said, then, then the little girl said, wait a minute, I'm not done yet. And what did you put right below his nose? Um, a mustache. A mustache. <laughs> and then, what did you put on his chin? A red dot. Oh, he, he put, she put red on his chin. So he's up there telling the story about this little girl, and then I realize that it's Susan's granddaughter that he's talking about. And so I'm like shaking inside because it's kind of like she says, here. <laughs> She's an artist, and how special is that? And... And that's, this is her daughter, Allison, and so she's here too, and her, Allison's husband, and, and then this, this is their little girl, Scarlett. And so they're all here, and again, we're family. The artists, the patrons, the staff, the community. It's just like we should start singing that song, We Are Family, or something like that. Do you want to, do you have anything to say that you want to say? Say thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Yes. Or thank you. And she also loves sunflowers, so that's why we have sunflowers there. Thank you so much. And now we're going to get on with the awards, right? Absolutely. Okay. So it has been a real honor to work with uh, D Dr. David Levy uh, for this uh, weekend. We certainly have given him an awful lot of work to do. Um, the artists uh, that are here are really exceptional and it was not easy work on his part uh, to make these decisions, but it is yeah, our great pleasure to um, yeah, announce the Small Painting Sunday winners and then we get to hear a little bit about the competition choices and yeah, how those yeah, choices were made as well. So um, yeah, David Levy has been, yeah, has had a life 
that yeah, if you just took one little part of it, yeah, it sounds like an exceptional career. And yeah, from the Parsons School of Design and running that for 20 years and, and turning it into the, the educational juggernaut that it is today, uh, to the Corcoran Gallery, which was when he took the helm yeah, in a moment of turmoil. And yeah, he just took it and made it into yeah, a much more solid uh, uh, institution than, um, than what he found. Uh, he is fundamentally uh, an educator and a uh, um, museum administrator, but he is also an artist. He is also a musician. Yeah, just an incredibly yeah, neat guy that I've, it's been a real pleasure to get to know a little bit over the last couple of days. With all that, I'm going to say, David, are you ready to um, hand out a couple more awards? <laughs> Let's give him a warm welcome. So, we're looking at the small paintings, and as is the custom here, we start with the honorary, honorable mentions, and the first one, it goes to Ellen Vatney, the title is, the title, oh no, that's, I'm sorry, that's the sponsor, I'm sorry, oh, okay, right, all right. I'm All right, the sponsor. The sponsor. Of this oh, yes. oh, right. Yes, yes. I'm just. I'm, listen, you put a piece of paper in front of me. I just read it. You know. <laughs> I mean. Oh, but yes, of course. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Title is Skyward, and the artist's name is uh, Nicholas O'Leary. Bring yeah, bring the painting. Bring the painting. You know, I should have figured this thing out because the name Ellen Vatney occurs about f yeah. one, two, three, four, five times uh, on this piece of paper. So, Ellen right. So, <laughs> so, so we'll just we'll just stipulate that all of these awards are sponsored by Ellen. <laughs> and the next one uh, is the title is not in use, and the artist's name is Greg Larocque. Okay, now we're at third okay, place. What? Oh no, the painting has to come up. Is Greg around? Is he here? Greg Larocque? Do I see? Yeah, we'll see his painting. Oh, gotcha. at Kim's okay. demo. Oh. All right, so well, we will get this to him later. Okay. But we'll, we'll bring the painting. Oh, here we go. <laughs> to Alan Sleeper for being a great volunteer. One of those volunteers I've been talking part about Part of the earlier. family, right, part of the family. I, I do want to say uh, that, that I love little paintings. They're, they're just, it's, it's like jewels in an art gallery. Uh, and and they're, they're lovely. And it was a one, I, I, I probably enjoyed um, making this sele these selections more than almost, um, any of the things we did in the last couple of days. It was really fun. I loved the paintings. Um, the, okay, now we're in third place, and same sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> and the title is Scosa. Scosa, that's the name of a restaurant. Okay, a restaurant. Okay. Oh, I've eaten there. Okay. Um, <laughs> and it's Christopher Joseph Leeper.
Second place. Oh, not here? No, no. I, but the announcement. Okay. <laughs> Title is Sunset, and the artist is John Brandon Sills. Oh, okay. He, we know for sure is not here. So, do we have the painting? Here it comes. Coming. He's already left for Door County. <laughs> Let me see that one. <laughs> yeah, right. And now we get down to uh, to number one, and the title here is. Find Me in Shadow, and the artist's name is Zufar Bikpal. Zufar? He went to Door County, too. So. All right, also not here. Do you have the painting there? Thank you again, and thank you for Susan, and thank you for the family for being here. It's really special. Thank you. So, excuse me. We have a somewhat unusual occurrence. In fact, it is unique in the 15 years of uh, Plenary Easton. But uh, one of the awards that was made, uh, it turned out, was not painted dur during the time period. That was you know, that is part of our rules, and that doesn't make it any less deserving of an award. And so we are adding an additional honor, honorary, uh, excuse me, honorable mention, uh, which we are about to announce, so that it is fair for all the artists who were in um, in the time limits. And yeah, that is where, what's about to happen. So we're going to start with with one more award for the main competition, which we're going to see, and then uh, we'll start our judges' talk. Okay, you know, yeah. Just, just a, a, another, I, I, as, you told, as, as Al explained to me when this happened, it was neither the artist, it was, a, it was an accident, and it was neither the artist's fault nor, nor the foundation's, it just happened, it was a slip up. So, the um, title of this uh, honorary mention is Corn Crib, and the artist is Richard Sneary. Now we're into a little bit of a talk. I'm going to, can, can we get this bottle of water here? I might actually sit down. Okay, that's great. Um, enjoy at least. Okay, you got any images? All right, I'm, we're going we're gonna to go through the awards, talk about them a little bit. But um, I just want to begin with a little introduction. Um, a little sort of an ind a little uh, addendum to the introduction that um, that Al just oh and people oh, wait a minute I tell you what before I even begin I just want to thank particularly uh, a couple of people and and that is uh, Al and Jessica who uh, have just been working like crazy and and in particular 
uh, working to make my life a little easier because this was a very difficult show to judge. The work was uh, very high quality, and uh, that always makes it hard because, you know, you can't just sort of eliminate lots of people quickly. Um, there's another person I want to thank who called me up about two months ago and said, listen, I'm here to make your life a little easier, uh, and she did, and she uh, kind of guided me through the schedule, um, and she kept telling me, you know, it's going to be very hot. You should wear shorts. And, and I, I said, well, I don't do shorts. Uh, but, but she said, well, but then you should wear white. So I did. And that, and that is Merrilee Ford, who has just been wonderful and helpful. And, and finally, I want to say that, uh, you know, having, I came down last year because I was the um, the juror that brought in the, the group last year. Uh, it's an extraordinary experience, this exhibition, because uh, this is a community that gets behind it. The, the sense of spirit and the sense of commitment, and the, not just about making, helping with dollars, but just the excitement that I feel, have felt for the last three days of everybody coming in to see the art and buy it and talk about it, and it's kind of, it's, it's kind of wonderful. Uh, when, when you've spent a life in art, to know that there is a, a really that communities are, uh, have this kind of spirit. And also because this is not, you know, the hot thing in the market right now, um, which is too bad, actually. Uh, and, uh, but, but the whole plein air movement, uh, which I think, you know, if you, look at, if you look at the history of art, has been tremendously important, and it continues to be important. So it's, it's a privilege to be able to, to come in and look at all this work. Um, now, as far as the addendum to the introduction, um, first of all, <laughs> you know, after doing all, those, all that nice work that Al talked about for the good, the true, and the beautiful, I went to the dark side and wound up the last 10 years as the president of Sotheby's Institute of Art, which <laughs> was a little different. But, um, but the main thing I want to tell you is that I think if you listen to my background, it sounds like I'm a city boy. And in many respects, I guess I am. But I can relate to this work in particular because I actually grew up half the year uh, in farmland uh, where I went to a one-room schoolhouse, and the other half of the year on an island in a little community of seven houses uh, that had no roads, in, an island that has, to this day, no roads and no cars. And I still spend a good deal of time in the, there in the summertime. Uh, so I have a feel for the water. It's very important to me. I actually have five boats, not counting dinghies. So... <laughs> So, um, so, I, I, so a great deal of what I'm looking at is very meaningful to me, and I just want to make that point. Um, now, a little bit of an issue here. I think, you know, this is um, unfortunately rear screen projection on a very sunny day where uh, the light is uh, actually making it difficult to really see these that slay the slides, and you're going to see slides of all the work that has received awards. Um, uh, but I really urge you to go into the gallery if you haven't already and look at them in the, in the, in the flesh, as it were, because uh, the slides really don't do them justice. Uh, the, they never do anyhow, but with the light behind them, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, and th these are not, this is not work from the show. This has to do with something that I think is actually quite quite important in terms of where we're going in this, in this conversation. Uh, because we can talk about, and we will to some degree, about why one choice was made and, or another. But I think the real issue here is how do you look at art? And maybe a little bit about how I look at art. And I look at art in several ways, but I start out by saying that art is communication. It's communication between an artist and a public, of in, in necess not necessarily of one size, but uh, but between art, between an artist and people. And I would say also that to use a philosophical concept that you know you, there there are such things as uh, as necessary conditions, and then there are sufficient conditions. 
Well, communication, in my book, is a necessary condition of art, not a sufficient condition. There are plenty of things that communicate that are actually quite beautiful, that are illustration or journalism. Um, and so how does something transcend being communication and then become also art? And that is where the aesthetic issues come in. And we're talking here about visual art because obviously, you know, you have to apply this to, to uh, many, many art forms, to writing, to, to music, uh, which is difficult, um, to theater. Uh, so so what's the, what, are, what are the issues here? Uh, I'm a great partisan. In fact, I'm a, a, a more than a partisan. I'm an advocate of figurative and representational visual art. But I actually believe that the communicative, the, the parts of the art that communicate, to, that make it communication in an artistic sense are all abstract. That it is the relationships between the elements that make up a work, a, a work, a painting, or any work of visual art. It's, it's, the, it's the relationship that, and sometimes has some, a lot of ambiguity in it, that the artist develops very often uh, subliminally between those elements that makes it work. But it doesn't work unless you can, at, at some point, anchor it in real human experience. So, so what I'm showing you here, if you can see it, it's, 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 where I'm standing, it's very washed out, but I'm showing you something here that is absolutely abstract. Um, and I think it's a nice design, but I don't think it has much meaning. Now let's go to the next slide. All right, this is a painting by Edward Hopper. And what, the reason I showed you the first slide was I had cropped out the window. And when the window is not in it, it's just a bunch of shapes. And they don't tell a story. But the minute you see it as a window, uh, you see it as a room, you say, well, that, that has some meaning for me. And you may not be able to, artic to articulate that, that meaning in words. And that's not bad. That's actually good. If you could put it in words, you wouldn't make a painting. Paintings and art, visual art speaks to you in, in its own language. Writings and poetry speaks to you in its language. So we're talking here about a visual language, but you ha in my opinion, that has to be anchored in something that we can share, that the artist can share with you in terms of an experience that you can identify with as a human being. Um, Edward Hopper painted this painting when he was 81 years old. He had given a great deal of thought to his work for a long period of time, and I think the fact that this painting is as abstract as it is, uh, really uh, supports the notion that he also believed that the elements in his work that came together were the elements of, 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 of abstraction, but he always anchored them in reality. Uh, you know, the, 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 the art historical convention on Hopper is that uh, it's, it's about loneliness and a, a kind of it's all some kind of human condition issue, but I don't actually think that's true. I think that he put those people in because they were part of the world, but if he had his druthers, he would have taken them out uh, and just made the, the images of the shapes and forms that he liked to use, but they were always shapes and forms that you could identify with. And, of course, in the plein air vocabulary, that is always true. So, uh, let's move to uh, some of the, um, the awards. And we're going to do the honorable mentions first. And the first one is uh, the Chesapeake Log Canoe Regatta. And that, oh, we're going a little too fast here. Well, the, that, that one is the, is, is, is the uh, I believe the one that we just uh, that we just did. Yes. Um, no, it isn't actually. Oh no, I'm sorry. That's not the Chesapeake Log Canoe Regatta. That, that's the one we just did. Let's go on to the to the next one. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Um, 
what I really would ask you to do as you look at these, and again, they're, they're, they're kind of washed out, is to, is to see them uh, in terms of the manipulation of space and the, and the way, I gotta back off so I can see it better, um, the way in which, in which the, these, these forms relate to one another, uh, the, the way in which, in this case, and you really can't see it terribly well here, but particularly the way the water is, ha the water is handled, uh, and, uh, and, and the, the, so that everything begins to uh, cohere, and, and also a, a sense of, of extraordinary emotion. Um, I, I was told that this painting was made from another boat, which, made it, which makes it even harder. But um, anyhow, it's, there, there we go. Um, let's move on. Uh, the next one is, uh, the, next, the next painting is Island Barn. Now, this painting, I think, was a little bit of an idiosyncratic choice for me. Um, but I felt that, uh, that there was, a, and again, it's, if you see it in the flesh, there is a tremendous amount of strength in the patterning and the power of the uh, of the of the, the juxtaposition of shapes in that building, and uh, and again the whole its whole set set in the composition, so that was important to me. We have a lot to go, so we want to go pretty fast. Um, the next one is uh, is the best use of uh, oh yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, the best use of light. And again, uh, I'm reading. I said, "Would you?" That's not the artist. That's the sponsor. This is sponsored by Betty Huang and the Studio B Gallery. And there we go. Now, this you really can't see in the in the slide. Um, this painting, I think, is a very uh, a very unusual use of light. And in particular, when you go and look at it. I want you to look at the way the trees are handled, the way the trees actually uh, reflect the light, and also the way the light, the whole relationship of the light and the trees as it moves down to the light in the water. You really, it, I mean, I don't know, I can't, I can barely see it here. I don't know what it looks like from out in front. Um, it's a, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's Nikolai Mikushkin. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, the question was, who's the artist? And that's the answer. Um, it, it's very, it's, this is a very dark painting, and so the way it gets washed out here makes it, makes it quite difficult. Uh, the next, uh, uh, the next sub, uh, is uh, the best painting by a Maryland artist, um, sponsored by Kate Quinn. And the title is Mutt and Marty Do a Full Pull, and the artist is Stuart White. Again, and the, by the way, this this is a uh, a very powerful painting, um, where you where you actually kind of feel the whole motion of it when you look at it. Uh, it it's and again, you know, to make a painting with that kind of activity and make it hang together coherently is is a is a task and and very well executed here. Um, the next category is best watercolor. And this is sponsored by the Trip Gallery. And this is, uh, this is a very interesting painting. It is called Missed Opportunity as a pun, the word miss being spelled M-I-S-T. Uh, the, the artist is Russell Jewell. And again, <laughs> if you haven't already done it, please go look at this painting because there's, this is a real tour de force in terms of the way the mist is handled. Keep in mind also that this is a watercolor. Uh, and um, it, it just, you know, it's, it's the kind of thing which not just only works, but it really is evocative of, of uh, kind of, it, it is emotionally evocative. And I, I really believe um, that when I was talking about communication, that the communication ultimately that I'm talking about is an emotional communication. It's not just information. Information is journalism. Information could be illustration. Art 
reaches a different level, and I think that that's what the, certainly as a as looking at the, at this all this work that that was one of the things that I was looking very hard for, and this painting definitely does it. Um, quite apart from the pun, which is a little. <laughs> and the next one is the uh, best nocturne. And that is sponsored by Eric Timsack and Leslie Lobel. Um, and there's a video intro to this, it says. What does that mean? Al, what does it mean, video intro? Oh, okay. That was something else. Okay. All right. Um, so, the, the painting is One Summer Night. The artist is Krista Pisano. This painting... Uh, the thing about this painting is that it is tiny which you wouldn't know from here, but you, go, but you should go see it. Um, again, uh, it's a, a, a very, very skillful manipulation of, of the imagery of the light, the water, the sky. It just comes together. But it is very small and quite dark when you see it in its, in its, um, in its original form. Um, <laughs> the next one is sponsored by the Troika Gallery and is called Worthy of the Met. So I've, I've rarely been asked to, uh, to give orders to the acquisition committee of the Met. So this was kind of fun, you know, and I can tell them what they, what, you know, what they should be hanging in the gallery. Um, <laughs> this, this is a painting called Blackwater Sunset, and the artist's name is Terrell Gable. Um, <laughs> and one of the things that struck me about this painting um, which in many respects is a very, um, you know, it's in, in you know, it's it's kind of a prototypical planar painting. But the thing that struck me about it was that it has a kind of perfection. Um, everything about this painting is balanced. Everything about this painting, everything about this painting works. Um, not just from the from the, the gradations of the color to the to the, the formal the movement of the water, uh, the, the the relationship to the landscape, and the basically compositionally this painting really really comes together. And I was uh, so the Met should hang it up in its in, the, in you know in the main atrium there, and, uh, except it's kind of small, but you know they'll they'll figure it out. Uh, um, Best New Artist to Plein Air Easton, uh, sponsored by the Y Financial Trust. The title is Cuts and Case Crane. Artist's name is Eileen Eater. I think I'm pronouncing that. Uh, this is perhaps one of my more um, idiosyncratic choices. And um, I am very partial to sharp edges and, and triangles. Um, I spent a lot of time in my life as a graphic designer uh, and uh, among other things. And, um, and, I've, and I'm a, also a great fan of the artist and photographer Charles Sheeler. And I love the diagonals. And so this one really kind of grabbed me uh, for that reason, among others. Uh, very nice painting. Um, Let's move on. Best Architectural. This is uh, sponsored by the Historical Society of Talbot County. Um, abandoned Railroad Overpass, Cordova, uh, Maryland. And this is by Charlie Hunter. And I've been looking at uh, Mr. Hunter's work, which is, as most of you who know his work, is, as far as I can tell, entirely monochromatic. Um, I want to make a comment about that, which has always struck me, uh, and that is that color is, is great, and, and, and color can tell you a great many things about painting. But in some ways, 
what it, no matter what color you use, its value, the, the value of the color, by which I mean, you know, the relationship of dark to light, that, that ultimately, um, it, I think, carries the aesthetic forward. And that, um, so that when you look at a black or white reproduction of a painting, it often can be very powerful. And I think one of the most interesting examples of, to me is the following. When Pablo Picasso painted the painting, which at the time in his life was the most important painting he had ever made in terms of its meaning, and the painting being Guernica, he painted the entire painting, which is, by the way, half the size of this, I mean, it's practically the size of this wall. He painted the entire painting in black and white. And I think, and that sort of tells you something about the choices. So that is an interesting aspect of this work. But again, I think there's a very, a very, a very strong uh, and, and very powerful piece of composition and, and a terrific painting. Um, okay. Best Marine. And uh, this is by Quang Huang and it is sponsored by the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum, and it's called C Cambridge Classic. <laughs> and you know, I think that one of the things about marine painting is that if you're not careful, you can fall into a kind of cliche, and to, to be, so one of the things that I really liked about this painting was the handling of the paint, the, 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 the technical skill, uh, and the fact that it was able to break out of that of that of that uh, of that mode and become a statement of its of its own. The next one is the best figurative painting in a landscape, sponsored by Margaret Wrightson and David Bellis. And this is called Washington Street Nocturne, and it is by Hui Lei Chung. You really need to look at this painting, um, not, on the, not as a slide. I mean, not only is this, are the slides a little um, washed out, but they're also a little fuzzy. And, and, and a painting like this, which is not very large, um, the, the, the figures uh, are, are painted with, with great, assur great assurance. Um, and, and all of, and in fact, the whole painting speaks to and just an understanding. I mean, can, I can see this thing being done quite quickly because, there, because the brush and the hand was so sure of itself. Um, let me see. I'm trying to keep. Uh, yeah. Okay, the next one, I think, is Best Hospitality. And this is sponsored by Quality Inn, Easton, and Holiday Inn Express, Cambridge. And the title is Harbor Lights, and the artist is Elise Phillips. Uh, again, a really well-conceived composition. And if you look at the painting, not the slide, but go and look at the painting, this painting, it's almost as if the light is coming out of the painting. I mean, the painting just, it just, it's it's a, it's it's quite a jewel and and uh, it's it's just lovely and and, and uh, it it everything about this painting works, um, uh, but it jumps out at you and and you got you got to see the see the real thing. Next we have Life on the Farm, which is sponsored by the Tidewater Farm Club, <laughs> not surprising, and the Talbot County Farm Bureau. And the title is 101 in the Shade, which I think we can relate to, uh, shorts or not. Um, 101 in the Shade, I'm looking forward to it, I lost it here. Uh, the artist is John Caggiano, and um, that's who it is. Again, this is, the detail is what counts, you really have to see the, the object. The next is um, is the third place award, 
which is sponsored by the September 1st Partners, and the title is Island Girls, and the artist is Tim Kelly. <laughs> Doesn't look like it. Um, No. Oh, there it is. Now, th this is a large painting. And again, the question here is, you, you know, how do you take a painting like this and raise it out of the ordinary? And compositionally, this is actually a very bold painting. The, the foreshortening and the, and the use and the, and the way that decking comes out in front. I mean, that's a, it, there was, it was really, um, I, I guess what I like about this painting is the word I just used is its boldness. And, and um, it, it um, and, and also the whole circular uh, composition of it. Uh, but as I said, it, that's, about, that's about the right size, too. That's about the size the painting actually is. So it's, it, this painting really, uh, really uh, has power. And, and uh, you should, again, go and look at it. But this, but this actually is doing more justice to this painting than some of the other slides. Um, OK. Uh, I would like to... Next, we have the second place, and the title is, and this is sponsored by the Academy Art Museum, and the title is Sunny Day Mill. The artist is Charles Newman. <laughs> this is a very powerful painting. Uh, in many respects, uh, it, it is unconventional. It's, un it's conventional, but unconventional in the way it's handled. Um, in order to make a painting like this, you've got to be pretty damn sure of yourself. Um, and you have to feel that it just flows. And, and, uh, and you paint with, 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 with confidence. And this painting really does it. So there it is. And now we come to the Timothy Dills Memorial Award. Um, uh, is, was anybody going to come, come up and speak to this, or is it just me? I guess it's just me. Okay. Um, sure, okay. Timothy Dills was my late husband, and he passed away. Um, and when Plein Air was starting, he was the one that gave the first $10,000 said it had to go to award money. And he said it had to go to award money because in order for this event to be successful, we have to start here. If you start here, it takes forever to get there. And he was a real visionary. And uh, I think that Plein Air and, and Nancy Tankersley and all the different people that were involved in it came together. And that's why we're here today. And 15 years later, and uh, so uh, I've been since he passed away, I've been doing it for uh, the prize money uh, since then. And I just think that's really important. And he was a real visionary. I, I just wanted to say a, a couple of words about how this choice got made and, some of the, it, and, and one unique aspect of it. Uh, when I came in here on Friday morning and, and into, the, into the museum and I walked into the two galleries, I went into a tailspin. I went into a kind of deep depression. I had to go and sit on the bench for about a half an hour and, and after I had walked through the gallery about twice and just think, because I thought, you know, how the hell am I going to make a choice here? This, so much of the, this work is so damn good and, there's so much, and it's so accomplished and the skill levels are so high and uh, I just, this is going to be very hard. Maybe I can't do it. Um, but, you know, after a half an hour of brooding, um, I began to feel a lot better about it, and things began to clarify in my mind, and I kept walking around and walking around, and 
Jessica was very unbelievably patient because I think I probably took a lot longer than most judges. Um, and I kept walking around and walking around, but I kept coming back to one painting. Um, and I kept saying, gee, you know, is there anything wrong with this? I mean, uh, you know, is, what about the drawing? And, uh, and I just, but, I, but I, the more I walked around, the more I kept coming back to this one painting. Um, and then I finally decided that that was the one painting. But the thing that really blew me away was that when the artists came and made the artist's choice, they chose the same painting. And that was, I, I felt, I, I was very flattered by that because, no, I, I, because I, you know, look, people who spend their lives making art are people that you have to trust. And, uh, and so, um, you know, I felt, well, we're moving on here on the same page. So this is the painting. You absolutely can't see it here. Um, again, uh, this is a painting that, that, that kind of has, moves towards a kind of perfection. Compositionally, everything in this painting works. Um, but what's really interesting about this painting is to me, I mean, well, I mean, that's not, it's not the single, single thing. I mean, the color is terrific. The, the way the, handle, the paint handling is terrific. Uh, the, the light is terrific. But one of the things that really, really jumped for me was that these figures, these two figures, aren't really drawn. They are, they're, they're painted, but they're not painted, in, they're not linear. And actually one of the things that was bothering me was that, that uh, I thought initially, well, the hands are kind of fudged. Everybody fudges hands. I'd like to see somebody really draw hands. But, but, but as I looked at it, and particularly when I stood back from it, the thing about the figures that really got to me was that there is a, a either a absolutely scholarly or an intuitive understanding of the way in which the human body is put together. And they, you know, if you look at the, just the tension, you know, of leaning over a little bit or whatever, and all the, all the parts of the body that make that happen. And as you really, you gotta go look at this painting because <laughs> it's, it's as if these people are alive. And uh, so, and, and then just everything about it, you know, the, 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 co the color palette, and it's just, it's terrific. So, so go and enjoy it, and uh, somebody already bought it, so don't, but, um, what? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, i tell you the name. I didn't tell you anything about it. It's called, it is called um, Brunch on the Patio, and it's Amy Erickson. So, so we're pretty much out of time, but we could take a couple of questions if anybody has them. This is like a class, you know? I mean, uh, you know. <laughs> what? Oh, I, I don't see the, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Oh. What? I didn't hear that, but whatever it was, it must have been good. All right, um, all right. No questions. You all, you all fail. No. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'll tell you about the. The question is, was I, was I told to wear the Superman? I always wear Superman belt. Buckles. I, mean, I have for the last couple of years. I love the logo. I started wearing them just for the hell of it. And people would stop me on the street and make all kinds of comments. And I discovered that it was a great opener. For, you know, like I go into the, I, you know, a lot of times I won't go through the security in the airport, but the airport people always say, oh, you know, Superman, I love your belt. I love your belt. And I said, well, yeah, well, you know, it saves me a lot of airfare, but it's kind of cold today. And I <laughs> uh, normally don't fly. I don't normally fly commercial, but, you know, <laughs> so, so that's the answer to that question. Yeah. Sure. That's the question. The, 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 the suggestion was, let's have all the artists stand so we can give them a big hand.
Well, I thank you all, and thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for being such a supportive community of this exhibition. Uh, it's been a treat for me the last two years to be part of it. I, I feel very, very privileged indeed uh, to have participated, and uh, so I thank you.